So after we talk briefly about the magnetism, let's talk about the kinetics. And people study kinetics, uh, which is essentially how fast does things go. The central question would be, how do ceramic bodies change in their density with respect to time? Or how does ceramic body densify in this sintering process with respect to time? Right? How fast do it happen? And at the same time, how does the microstructure, green size, green shape, poor size, poor shape, change or evolute? Okay? And uh, the related question is what determines the particle compact? Whether they would uh, densify or whether they would uh, grow only in particle size cotton, okay? And uh, people have tried, but this is complicated. There, when you deal with particle system, there are many, many factors that are not very well controlled come into play. Over the years, people have developed many models to try to explain, account for the observed sintering behavior. But uh, there are many complexity or complications due to in real system we have many other factors that are not very well controlled or even well understood powder size powder shape powder size distribution can you exactly control everything to be spherical <laughs> under only under very rare cases typical is messy close but not exact right can you control the size exactly one micron, one micron, one micron, oh boy, not really, right? Size distribution related. So that makes your model very, whatever model you build, you assume certain geometry, certain size, but in reality, it's a mess, okay? And the bulk and the surface chemistry, do people understand all the surface energy, all the surface diffusion property? No, we don't. Quite often, the numbers are, you are, if you are lucky, you find some number. Most cases, you don't find, for new material or less common material, you don't have any number about them. Okay, in terms of surface energy, in terms of, of the lattice diffusion coefficient, not to mention surface diffusion coefficient. You have no idea what those are. Powder packing, random packing, ordered packing. Ideally, you can deal with ordered packing very easily. Random packing, okay. You have to build into the randomness, but that adds complexity. Okay, additives. Quite often, people add uh, sintering aid, add whatever other things into it. That complex, complicate, right? Initially, you you don't know the chemistry for your bulk of your material, and then adding something more to it, make it even more complex. And the heating cooling schedule wow we talk about isothermal sintering but then the next thing we tell you is is not exactly isothermal because you takes time to heat up takes time to cool down right nothing is exactly isothermal and the pressure atmosphere those things are also very tricky to control very tricky to control you're talking about atmosphere okay outside certain atmosphere, but within the bulk, if your ceramic body has certain size, within the bulk, the atmosphere clearly would be somewhat different from outside. And pressure, let's say you are doing hot pressing, can you guarantee the same pressure throughout the material? Not at all, due to friction, due to the body and the size, right? All these complications make the models limited. They offer only limited guidance. You cannot predict very well. So for practical systems, the, the models, despite all the effort in developing them, they offer limited uh, validity. You don't overgeneralize, I have this model, I can predict. Not exactly. It's more about uh, help you to understand the trend. Of course, the higher the temperature generally, the faster the sintering, something like that. 
that gives you a feeling, but well, temperature. 1650 versus 1680. No, you don't know that level of precision. Okay. Identify the critical parameter. You know, okay, temperature is important. You know, time is important. You know, atmosphere is important. You know, pressure is important. But uh, can you exactly predict? I plug the number in, the model will tell me what's my resulting relative density. No, it will never be that accurate. Okay. So it doesn't exactly have the predictive capability, but just help you. Okay, these are the knobs, these are the trends. I don't go to extreme, right? That's the, the, you have a trend, but quite often beyond certain point, the trend burns. We mentioned the centering. You can centering not, you do centering not at too low temperature because you never achieve full density. But you, at the same time, you don't also do it at too high temperature because for those, quite often you cause them too quickly and it, towards the end, you do not achieve full density. Okay? And uh, people also try to build a geometric uh, models to understand it. So, what I borrowed is some schematic. Initially, ideally, assume they are sphere touching each other only at uh, a point, right? If you are talk talking about real sphere, they're touching each other only at one geometrical point, which is mathematically even non existing, no area. And then after a certain time, of course, we would develop so called uh, neck. Between the point now it enlarged into a finite area. We call it a neck. Okay? That's initial stage. In the particle contact area increase from essentially zero to roughly point two. Point two. Was just okay. Over maybe the projection area. When you say point two, what does that point? I'm um, probably projected area between those two. Okay, and in that case, the density doesn't increase too much. Initially, sphere packing, depending on what types of packing, you are roughly 60, 55 all the way to 65, something like that. But let's say you are 60, and after a little bit of neck, you go to 65, something like that. And then intermediate stage centering. Now the particles can no longer, because they touch each other flat, it's no longer a sphere, and people change the shape. Started to do like a cube, you start to cut corners, flat corners of center body, but then between center body, there is a connected network of, you imagine the pores like a channel, okay? Continuous pore channel, these things, connected all of them together. Then when the relative density is roughly 65 all the way to 85, 90%. Highly conceptual, okay, roughly. And during this time, there's not much change in grain size. Density would increase, but remember what we said, the ideal condition, the grain doesn't increase too much, okay? And then towards the end, Towards the end, the connected pore now become isolated at only at the corners that they touch each other, okay? Connected, it become from connected to isolated pores. At the same time, this is not accurate, very good drawing. The particles should also become larger due to the unavoidable Green growth towards the end. Okay? So, this is kind of like how you imagine the process, but only for descriptive, nothing predictive. Okay? But roughly from here to 80, 90 percent, the greens hopefully doesn't increase too much. But towards the end, the green would increase. Over here, the pores are still more or less connected. Okay? And then, People develop more sophisticated mathematical model. We don't go into detail, but you can see, depending on the different uh, so-called mass transport mechanism, people would have different uh, non-parameters for the H factor as well as for M and N. I made a mistake here. I have to check which one is M, which one is N. But the take-home message is, okay, it can be messy, People develop a different model to describe them, 
But on the other hand, the applicability of these models are very limited. Very, very limited. It's unlike other stuff that, okay, I know this, I know roughly what is going to happen. 